Hello dear chess lovers and friends, welcome to the Nation of Vibos. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a very simple gambit to learn. Actually one of my favorite gambits in the D4 opening. And as you might have already guessed, this video is sponsored by D4, D5, and then instead of playing pawn to C4 or knight F3 or pawn to E3, you simply go pawn to E4. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Black Madima Gambit. Kindly leave whatever you're doing and watch. The most common move here is D takes E4 by Black, and I suggest that you do not resign, but you simply play Knight C3, attacking the pawn on E4. <laughs> I'm only showing you the top played moves for starters. Knight F6 is what you're going to see most of your opponents playing, defending their pawn on E4. And then what do you do? Pawn to F3. Let them take on F3, because here you have two ways of taking back your pawn, either with the knight or the queen. But one may ask, hey Kaspar, we are down a pawn for nothing. What are we doing? Yeah, I know that's why it is called a gambit. You simply give up a pawn for fast development, I mean, rapid development, and ensuring that you are developing your pieces on their most active squares. That's the whole idea behind gambits, you guys. Just like the wing gambit, the tennis on gambit, the Budapest. I mean, so just to give you a screenshot of what is happening here, given a chance, we would love to castle long and begin attacking from the king's side. This is where our game is going to be, okay? So we're going to start the minority attack from the king's side, assuming that's where black is going to castle. All right, so right here, instead of taking back with your knight, I want you to take back with your queen. Completely giving up the pawn on d4. Why giving up another free pawn? I mean, we are just two pawns down. This is called the Rider Gambit, you guys. Simply go Bishop E3. And here it will be quite confusing for your opponents. I mean, which move they should play. Should they play Queen B4 or Queen G4 or maybe Queen H4 check or just Queen back to D8? Let's see. First of all, Queen B4 aims at capturing another free pawn on B2. You simply castle along. Again, the top played move here is Bishop G4 pinning our Queen to our Rook. I mean, it looks natural, but <laughs> trust me, you guys, it's a positional mistake, okay? And this is how we trap people. Let them play bishop g4 thinking they are pinning our queen to our rook. <laughs> but here we just forget about this threat completely and play knight b5. <laughs> the idea is that if they take our queen, well, it is checkmate in one. Because this rook is controlling the whole of this d file. So uh, probably black is not going to take your queen. After you play knight b5 in an effort to mate on c7. So you're going to see them playing knight a6 to stop knight takes on c7. What are you going to do here? Well, just simply capture the pawn on b7, attacking the rook and the knight. And obviously, if they take your rook, you're going to take back with check. And if rook b8, well, you just take the rook. And after knight takes, there's a checkmate again with knight takes c7. So you're not going to see them doing that. Instead, they'll play something like queen e4 a multi-purpose move to force a queen exchange, that's one, to defend their rook on a8, that's two, and to threaten to capture your dark squad bishop on e3, which is number three. So what do you do here? Well, you simply go queen takes a6. You take that free knight, let them take your bishop. Don't worry, this is still fine and very much playable. Just simply play king b1. And if they take your rook, ha, you have queen c6 check. And if king d8, you don't even take the rook cause it is a mate in three, you guys. After king e8, knight d6 check. And he takes d6, bishop b5, knight d7. Bingo. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Let's say... Instead of king d8, black plays knight d7, blocking the check immediately since they cannot block with their elbow. Well, you simply go queen takes a8, that's check. Again, the only way to block this check is by doing it with their knight, not with their elbow. And I mean, king d7, you take on c7. If king goes back to e8, that'll be checkmate. So they have to play king e6, you go queen c6, check. I mean, it will just be checks from here and there is no way black can survive this. Anyway, so that's just one way to play this so-called rider gambit that arises from the black Madima gambit, you guys. So we just finished looking at queen b4, where we just castle short, again, inviting them to play bishop g4. But what if black plays, let's say, queen g4, going for an early queen trade? Well, when you're playing a gambit, the worst thing that you would want to do is to exchange queens, okay? A queen is an attacking piece, so play queen f2, don't exchange it. 
just yet. And after something like knight c6, which happens to be the top played move, while well, you go pawn to h3. Remember, once this queen goes away, would love to castle long and continue with life. Just some quick development. Let me give you an example. If queen b4, you simply castle long. e6, they just want to develop their dark squad bishop and castle short. Well, you just go knight b5 once again with the same ideas of mating on c7, except this time they have king d7. So that won't be met, but let's say if knight d5, well, <laughs> defending their c7 pawn, guess what? In this particular line, or in the rider gambit, whenever you see this knight on d5, while your rook is on d1, it is okay to sacrifice this rook. I mean, rook sacrifice is a common idea, even in the Sicilian defense. Let them take on d5, and that's when you go knight takes c7, check, forking the king and the rook on a8. Ha! King d8, well, you just take the rook, or even better play, pawn to a3, an improving move, since black has no time to take your knight. So if they play, for example, that's when you take the rook, you also have moves such as bishop f4. And maybe, just maybe, your knight is going to be rescued. Position here according to Stockfish is plus 5.0. <laughs> so this is surely a gambit that I would love to try out called the rider gambit. I play the black Madiba gambit, don't worry. So let's look at something else that black can do here. So, again, we just sacrifice our second pawn on d4 to let black take it. And after they do, we play bishop e3 attacking their queen. And instead of queen b4, once again, they go queen g4 wanting a queen trade. Well, we just go queen f2, planning to castle long after, let's say, bishop e2. Again, knight c6, we simply go h3 and queen b4. Then we castle long, pawn to e6. Knight b5 with the same idea. Knight b5 is a very important move in this gambit. So once the dust settles, always remember to play knight b5. If you play something like knight f3 or bishop, whatever, you're just wasting your time. So knight b5 is something to look out for in the rider gambit. Okay, so with knight b5, we are attacking the pawn on c7. So we saw black playing knight d5 here. What if they play something like bishop d6 to hold on to their pawn? Well, what did I say about this rook? You always be doing this. Rook sacrifice and after c takes d6, well you have a3 attacking the queen first and after queen a5 you go knight takes d6. That's check and black has lost his right to castle. This is even worse you guys cause this will be a game of pins from now onwards, we are threatening to take the pawn on b7 with a uh, discovery check, win the queen. I mean, this won't be an easy game for black to play. Believe you me, we have all sorts of threats, all sorts of pins. We can do whatever we want as long as uh, black's king is on the center. They'll find it very difficult to solve these kinds of positions met. Back to this position once again, where we take back with our queen. Letting black to take the free pawn on d4, and then we go bishop e3 attacking their queen. So we've covered what happens after queen b4 and queen g4. What if black plays queen h4 check? Well, we don't want to trade off queens. Just play g3 here attacking the queen. And after queen, say no to this early queen trade because we are playing a gambit. e5, bishop h3. I mean, this is even deadly, by the way. We are simply winning the free bishop on c8. But according to Stockfish, that's not completely free because of the line that I'm about to show you. So they have to take our free pawn, attacking the undefended knight and the undefended rook. What do we do? We go knight d1. So if they play an in-between move, bishop b4, check, because checks are always good. You simply go bishop d2, bishop takes, queen takes. And if they take on a1 this time, well, you simply take the free pawn on b7. And next, you're going to take the free rook on a8. Let them castle short and then you do the needful. And from here, I don't see the reason for white to lose this game. So this is just about the rider gambit, you guys. Let's go back. Now, let's look at the real meat, you guys. How about if black plays queen back to d8, what do you do? Well, you simply hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if at all you haven't already. Because that's how you encourage me to keep on making more wonderful videos just like this one. By the way, my courses are still on promotion. Go to my website www.casperchess.com or simply sign up for my free masterclass through the link which is in the description down below or in the comment section or 
in the cut above, I don't know. After signing up for my free masterclass, you will receive a free mini course to entertain your eyeballs. So do the need for you guys because that's how you encourage me to keep on working harder for you guys. All right, so do subscribe to my channel and hit the like button during this short break. I mean, just in four seconds. Let's go. All right, now back to this position, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the move here is rook d1 simply attacking the queen now let me tell you what is going to happen here this line will make black's position to be paralyzed what do i mean watch they'll play knight bd7 the top played move here you go bishop e2 why not bishop c4 or bishop b5 first of all bishop b5 will invite pawn to c6 and these moves will come with a tempo so you don't want to make your opponent open up his lines you're playing a gambit i mean Again, I see no point of playing bishop c4 here if black can play pawn to e6. Your bishop will become a useless bishop. So just go bishop e2 in most of these lines where black delays to play pawn to e5, okay? Because pawn to e6 may come. So after bishop e2, you may see them playing pawn to e6. What do you do? You go queen g3. <laughs> queen g3 stops the development of this dark squad bishop and also threatens to capture the pawn on g7 if this bishop stops guarding this pawn. So they'll probably play pawn to g6. And as you can tell here, you have forced black to fiancero his bishop, a position that they never even intended to play. So you go knight f3 here. Simple development, you just want to castle short. If they fiancero their bishop, well, you castle short, they'll castle short. First of all, this knight is still pinned to the queen by our rook. So don't worry, we go bishop c5 the knight can't take us we are attacking the rook on f8 so they'll play rook e8 see how paralyzed black's position is looking now so you got knight g5 what are we doing with this knight well let me just tell you the truth we want to sacrifice again on f7 for example if they play h6 we just sacrifice why is this sacrifice good because we are overloading this king okay this king has to guard the g6 pawn it has to stay close to the d6 pawn the knight on f6 is pinned to the king the knight on d7 is pinned to the queen look at how paralyzed black's position looks and here it is our move we can simply go knight e4 intending to take on f6 next and let's say they play b6 harassing our bishop well we just go bishop d4 adding more salt to the wound you guys if they go pawn to e5 well we simply go bishop c4 check that line is opened if they play king f8 look at this we simply take on g6 with our queen intending to checkmate i mean so many threats here queen e7 you go bishop takes e5 because the idea is that if they take with their knight attacking our queen well we can simply ignore that threat and take on f6 with our knight so that if knight takes our queen we will simply mate with knight h7 double check and there's nothing that black would do here so they have to play bishop e6 maybe doing something i don't know then you go knight takes e8 you take the rook plus discovered check king g8 you take the bishop with check and after king h8 you go queen takes on g7 check they will take with the queen and then you take back with a knight they take back with a king and then you go rook d5 attacking the queen at the end of the day we are just a pawn up plus a piece up so this is just how crazy this gambit can be if you play it correctly and I suggest you try out this gambit you guys in your rapid matches and your blitz matches even your bullet your hyper bullet games i do not recommend playing this in longer time controls like in classical standard matches otb standard matches why because you know the way it works given more time your opponent may figure out what to do or how to punish you for i mean giving up this pawn on f3 plus this pawn i mean it doesn't mean black doesn't have solutions but it might take black something like five minutes or three minutes to come up with the best defense okay but in rapid matches this gambit has proven to work in fact let me just show you what i'm talking about using the leeches database you can see right here with bishop e3 the score percentage for white is 54 percent while 43 percent for black meaning white wins most of the games okay in blitz and rapid 
because that's what people play on leeches mostly and there is also an interesting line where you play knight b5 immediately but i don't believe in this even though the score percentage again is 59 percent almost 60 percent and black only wins about 38 percent which shows you that the black madima gambit accepted the rider gambit is quite a powerful gambit that you can try out in your rapid matches and blitz so once again you guys if at all you enjoyed with all your eyeballs watching this video don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up share this video with your friends and family if you can in your whatsapp groups i don't know facebook other social medias just to support my website to see